Uh, and uh, she was the, um, she spoke at the TED conference when she was 12 about just this, you know, about what we can learn from kids uh, about creativity um, and, and living life. And so, Adora Svitek, why don't you come out here? Lady Gaga fan. <laughs> we asked them, like, what, what song do you want to come out to? And so this is it. That was my sister. Mine was Europe, yours is a dedication. Yes. Um, so uh, you were 12 years old when you were at the TED conference, right? I was. It was an incredibly daunting experience, but also one of the best of my life. Right, right. And what were you, what were you doing before that? How did you get invited? Well, when I was seven years old, I published my first book, Flying Fingers, and since then I've been speaking at schools around the nation about education, reading, and writing, and so Ted heard about this and invited me to speak. It was incredible. Yeah. So, um, I mean, it's been, it's been fun kind of listening to, to, these, uh, to everyone and, and uh, what they've been doing and the fun they're having and what's inspired them. I mean, we had a little bit of a conversation last night. I mean, what's like, what are some big things that we can sort of learn, you know, from, from kids? Well, I think one of my huge takeaways is just hearing about Jordan and hearing about Kane and what they're doing is sort of the wisdom of not knowing not knowing the problems, not having um, this huge awareness of here are all the things that could go wrong. Yeah. I mean, I think that that's something that has helped me incredibly, just not knowing what lies ahead sometimes. Also, being able to scale your passions. A lot of times we think, okay, I like doing this, but it's just a hobby, let me set it aside. But being able to take that and make it larger is really important. Yeah, yeah. The not knowing thing, I think, is huge. Like, you know, so much of my day is like, you're, you're coming up with these ideas and things like that, and you're constantly like, can't do that, or like that will never, you know, the client will never buy off on that, or that's yeah. not possible. And it ends up like sort of sabotaging yourself. I think so. We're so scared of uncertainty that we're unable to actually move forward. Yeah. And that's incredibly damaging. When I think about when I was four years old, you know, it's you jump off the treehouse, you don't think, okay, will I break a leg or not? You just jump. Yeah, I went down some cement steps on a tricycle. <laughs> it's like the one thing I remember as a kid. I and mean, I, I just remember, I don't remember getting hurt. I just remember trying to go over cement steps down, and it wasn't it wasn't good. Um, what a so yeah, you know, there, there's a wisdom of not knowing. Um, what about fearlessness? Like you, you talked a little bit about that. Well, I think that there's just this incredible impulsivity in kids because as we talked about, you know, you're trying to scroll down the cement steps, but also if you think about you know making an app or making an arcade, it's yeah. again just going ahead and doing it. When I wanted to publish a book, my parents would say, "Wait till you're older," and because again, not knowing, but also this whole fearless idea, I would just um, go out there and write. Another thing is that when I was much younger, I had no fear of speaking in public whatsoever because yeah. I didn't realize you were supposed to be scared. So yeah. thinking like that has been um, a really good way for me to get back in touch with my inner child, I suppose. I'm still 14. Yeah, yeah. 14. So I don't even need to be an inner child, I'm an outer child. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to bring as much makeup. Um, you talked a little bit before, and like this was something we were going to talk a little bit about. Just that notion of scaling passions. So, you know, in all of the examples, right, uh, these people are just so, the business ideas, right, they're starting off as, they're starting from something that they're just incredibly passionate about, right? It's just what they want to do for fun. It's not what they want to do for money. They're not worried about what they're going to do for your, their job in life or anything like that. It's just, what do I want to have fun with? Exactly. I mean, that's why I started with writing. I would just have this giant legal pad and I'm writing, writing, writing. My mom would have to shout for me to come to dinner and stop writing already. I was never going into this with like a giant strategic plan of any sort. And so I definitely think that, that was incredible for me. Um, and a lot of times we try to separate work and life and here's my hobbies. But I think that what um, Jordan and Kane and I have in common is that we allowed all of us to blend really seamlessly. Right, right. And then the scaling part, I think, is an important thing, right? You just sort of start small, and then you build and build on that. Yeah, I mean, because we had dreams, and we said, okay, let's go out and get them. We did that, and then it grows, and we're not afraid to let it grow. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, we have something else in common, procrastination. Yes. Necessity in life. Yeah. And, you, and you, I thought it was always a problem, but I'm glad to hear that's not. I don't think it is. I, I mean, procrastination forces you to be really honest and urgent and authentic because when you have one hour until you have to give your speech, you're not going to waste time on all these flowery lines and trying to make yourself look good. You just want to get it done. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, yeah, I do a lot of procrastination, but it forces you to just sort of commit to something. I think so. Yeah, 
I leave it to the last minute until there's no time to like just you know, <laughs> you know meander or anything. And like you can't that. go back and mostly edit. That's another thing. Yeah. I mean, when we give ourselves these extra long deadlines, you know, you can always go back and change this and tweak that. But sometimes I think it's best to just go out there with procrastination. Right. Right. Now, what about personal missions? That was something big. Personal missions are definitely huge. I mean, when I was young, I had this concept of the world that everyone loved to read, right? Yeah. And when somebody says to me, no, I don't really like to read, it basically shattered my little five-year-old's conception of the world. And so I decided I'm going to make kids like to read and write. Yeah. So being able to take that personal mission, scaling it to be larger, and again, not seeing those problems. I mean, I've been seeing these common threads in a lot of kids, and I think it's incredible that we've been able to do what we've been able to do, thinking like that. Yeah. And then you see that you I mean you see the missions in, in Kane's thing with just sort of the notion of playing, right? He just wants the world to play and, and to play with him. Uh, and then and then Jordan's missions as well. Um, so uh, when do you have time to be a kid? Well see, I think that that's a somewhat not That's a trick, trick question. question. But <laughs> this is the kid to point out. We don't say, here's where I have an impact. This is my school, and this is where I have fun. You know, for me, this is being a kid. I think that it's an amazing experience, and I've learned and played so much being able to attend wonderful conferences like this, speak to people like you. Yeah. But if you're wondering, I do still go see movies and such. Your favorite movie? Well, I just saw The Avengers. Um, I would not say it's my favorite movie because it was, like, incredibly stupid. I mean, like, no offense to... Not, not incredibly stupid. It had moments that bordered on unbelievability. Uh, favorite movie, probably Casablanca, definitely. Oh. I'm in really old movie space. I haven't even seen that. You should. I'm waiting until I'm 40. Any any last thoughts you can leave us with? Yeah, I think that a lot of times we're afraid to be childish because we think of it as a negative thing. We think of all these negative qualities and impulsivity and naivete, and we make fun of other people for being childish. But I think that it's really not a negative word. That's what I spoke about in my TED Talk. Yeah. And that when we realize that, when we embrace the things that make us childish, that have made Jordan, Kane, and I childish, that we can really accomplish amazing things, whether it's an arcade or whether it's a band-aid that comes to life, really anything uh, that we set our minds to. We should all be childish. And curious. Let's all explore. Let's really get in touch with that same amount of play and learning that we have when we're four or five years old, even when we're 14 or 40. Right, right. Cool. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Should we get everybody to come up now? They're saying no. No. <laughs> Okay, um, so we learned a lot today. Um, we learned about uh, being resourceful, that it's okay to procrastinate. Um, you know, curi the role of curiosity, the role of just sort of like not knowing, you know, like the, the, the wisdom of the unknown. You know, when I started talking, I mean, that